Hi, this is Michael McGinnis. Today's topic, consciousness. A series on what it is and how to cultivate it. What does consciousness really mean? This podcast focuses on one key aspect and benefit to learning how to be more conscious and aware of self. It uses a practical example on how the application of more conscious behavior can make a significant difference in our life. Let's begin with a quote from Eckhart Tolle. Inner space consciousness and who you are in essence are one and the same. And it is from this inner space, the unconditioned consciousness itself, that true happiness, the joy of being emanates. For most of us, we have enough on our minds and play as we deal with our job, family finances, ambitions, relationships, challenges, hardships, crisis, and whatever else consumes our time. I get this. This was the case for me too. Even if I was interested, the word consciousness sounded like a term that comes from some yoga or Buddha seminar, which was not exactly my cup of tea at, at that time. Forget consciousness. We spend more time enjoying our unconscious moments, such as sleeping it off after one too many beers. Ha ha. This was an area I dabbled in at times. It was during the pandemic, however, that I realized how quickly my mind would wander. That's what happens when we spend a lot of time on, on our own or by ourselves. It was a function of a lot of idle time, along with what I recognized as a typical state for me, for my mind to race on and on and on. This became the ideal growth opportunity for me since I was staying in more and very interested in my own personal growth. Consciousness was a term that came up often as I started my spiritual search. So let me attempt to put my own words around this concept relating to what I have discovered myself. I would describe it as follows. We can achieve a state of awareness, realization, or simply just a moment where we are fully aware of what we are doing or being. From this awareness, we can learn to quiet the mind in order to seek a better place or feeling. It is like looking into the mirror and seeing you for who you really are at that moment, including the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of behaviors, not looks. Okay, so big deal. One can achieve this with a couple hits from a marijuana cigarette, right? Still too new age-ish? Well, you're right. So what would make this topic more practical for you to consider? Ah, yes, make this relevant to me. Then you might consider reading on. What's in it for me? Okay, so let's start with something practical. We all have aspects of self that create more negative than positive feelings and therefore more negative consequences, the basic cause and effect. These become our patterns. Our significant other has probably come to know what our buttons are by now and when and how to push them. Using consciousness helps us to realize these patterns, what provokes them, and then with this awareness, we can make a better or a healthier choice resulting in a more positive outcome. Let me share a personal example. I would write a post utilizing the same languages in this podcast and then check back each day to see if anyone read it and hopefully gave it a thumbs up or better yet wrote a positive, positive comment. This would create a positive feeling where I felt validated and that others were approving of me. However, this was not always the case. Often I would check back and see that only a couple of people reviewed the post or listened to the podcast with no feedback or comments. The result, I realized, was that I became depressed. I had learned through prior counseling that this pattern developed as a result of not receiving any approval from my parents, and therefore was an unmet need that I was still constantly seeking, approval from others. This was due to my low self-esteem or sense of self-worth. This was one of my negative and reoccurring patterns. So I was becoming more conscious of an action and begin to relate it to the cause and effect. No, 
we all have these types of negative or repeating patterns, which result in negative consequences in our life. You know, fight with a significant other, or a spouse, a fight, etc. Our friends and significant others have come to learn our buttons and patterns. Many of these were developed in our early formative years based on what we were told and experienced. These unconscious beliefs are stored deep within ourselves and end up driving our behaviors, resulting in repeating these patterns over and over again until we become conscious of these patterns and use the self-awareness to make changes, to not just react. Increasing your own consciousness will help you deal with a nagging issue, pattern, or negative feeling. How, you ask? Well, here we go. For a long time, as I mentioned, I got depressed. That was a normal state for me throughout much of my younger life. This was a reaction to these types of situations, as I mentioned, and an underlying belief that I was not worthy. I would find some escape to make me feel momentarily better or sit in a corner sulking. After all, I was unworthy, which was the belief I'd formed from my traumatic childhood. But one day I had thought there had to be a better way. I didn't want to keep this negative feeling. I wanted to deal with this situation rather than have it repeat itself over and over because it just kept resulting in the negative feelings associated with depression, feeling down, not moving, gaining weight, and you know it, and all the types of things that happen when we're depressed. This is the first step to being conscious. I recognize that I had a problem that I no longer wanted. I am now conscious and aware of this. The question is, what do we do with this awareness? Is there a lot of work related to this? Well, if so, I maybe let's come up with excuses and reasons why I don't want to do it. Some of them practical, I don't have a lot of time, so on and so forth. Well, there is work, which is true of almost anything we really want in life. So let's rule out those who do not want or have the internal motivation to really drive forward. But you may want to read on anyways, just in case to understand the real return on investment from this time and effort. First, we begin with a bit of education based on the premise that we can indeed change. Related to this is the concept of choice. You know, I show an image. Actually, it came from Viktor Frankl, famous individual who, grew, who had experience in the concentration camp. I'll get back to that later. But nevertheless, it's really how we come to understand choice. I show this image and it's this foundational principle to being conscious that we make choices during practically every waking moment. What is this choice? It is, as Viktor Frankl, an amazing dude and story, by the way, states in the image he shares, it is that fraction of a moment that we choose our response to whatever the stimulus that is happening around us. Noise, anger, frustration, lack of approval. We know our typical response, that's our pattern. But if we stop and utilize consciousness and our awareness in that second, we can make a choice to how we want to respond rather than just falling prey to the normal pattern that we have. Most of us are conditioned to respond in a certain way based on our past beliefs as we talked about. It's an automatic response. An example of this is why people push our buttons or when people push our buttons. For example, when we grew up, we were teased about some aspect of our looks. Now, years later, as soon as someone makes that statement or something that sounds like it's referencing to our looks, we immediately become frustrated and walk away, shaking our heads and huff and puff. It has become part of who we are to the point that we are not even conscious of this pattern. What can support maintaining these negative patterns is our belief that we are a victim 
right? You know, we feel it well, I blame our parents, blame others. That's why this happens to me. That's why all this negative stuff happens to me and nothing I can ever do about it. So I'll just continue to blame parents, society, civilization, doctor, whomever. We just continually blame others for making fun of us and just react accordingly. That's our pattern. It's a negative pattern that I would really classify it. So let's now go back to the first step that we recognize this behavior and no longer want to react to us, that conscious moment. With this new awareness, we may want to realize why these situations or stimulus bother us. Sometimes we need help from trained professionals, for example, therapists or counselors, to go and recognize the cause and effect, the source in this case. This was the case for me since I had buried so deep the abuse I went through that it took time in counseling to realize what really happened. I was in the state of denial, but this may not always be needed. When what is most important is that we see the cause and effect of what's going on now. Outstanding. We have now what we need to make a change. We learn to recognize these situations and how our reaction begins beginning with that feeling we may feel. For example, we clench our fists or feel that knot in our stomach, followed by a response where we get mad or angry or walk away. We learn to be conscious of and aware of these situations and initial feeling. We see our patterns. It's hard to at first. And that's why a lot of people don't do it. It's hard to look in the mirror and really see us for who we are. But when you do, and you see the good, bad, and the ugly, you realize that you have a choice. That's that choice of which you then use consciousness and awareness to really empower yourself to make that change. This is the chance for the whole gra holy grail to work, which is to create that momentary consciousness where we recognize what we are doing. With us in awareness comes an opportunity for us to recognize that we have that choice. We step back, take a few breaths or whatever steps we have developed to choose an alternate behavior. We are beginning to break that pattern. If you get this, you are on your way to one of the most powerful elements of personal growth and self-discovery. You now have a res recipe to begin to soften the rough edges of your life using conscious and awareness to make healthier choices. You can continue to work on different responses you make that result in you feeling less than positive. Is it easy? Sometimes, but more often than not, it's difficult. It requires a lot of work and repetition, learning how to repeat our choices and becoming conscious of what's happening so that we then stop. Take that moment, that pause moment. We push that pause button and consider our options. This is how change takes place. We fall into our old behaviors, but then we recognize this or become conscious of these situations, which is where we learn to use our consciousness and awareness to become better and happier person that we want to be. If that's our motivation, and we utilize that consciousness and awareness to see what's going on, you have now the recipe to really produce healthy change. So just imagine the implications of this. Instead of constantly reacting to situations, we learn to take charge of ourselves by making more conscious and healthier choices. We learn to take charge of the only thing we really have in control our attitude and our choices that we make. You repeat this recipe and discover that you are not as frustrated anymore, which is replaced with being happier. Multiply this times 7.5 billion times on Earth, our population, and we could see greater levels of peace, kindness, avoiding the temptations of power and greed or frustration, all these negative patterns that lead to negative consequences for self, others, and society. For sake of making healthier choices to really benefit ourselves and then others. One of the key challenges associated with this 
is the choice we must make up front in that we are no longer victims. Instead, we make the choice to be a victor where we are taking charge of our life and realize that we're responsible adults now that can make these choices. It's up to us. In our next podcast, we'll focus on ways to become more conscious in everyday life. Hey, thanks for joining. And here's to you becoming conscious.